Alexander Hamilton, born in the West Indies and raised as an orphan at age 12, became the first Secretary of Treasury along the side of George Washington. He was recognized by Washington during the Revolutionary War as an artillery captain and was eventually invited to join Washington's cabinet as the first Secretary of Treasury. Just like George Washington, Alexander Hamilton was a Federalist and they wanted the Federalist government over the states and to adopt the Congress and Constitution government and to trash the Articles of Confederation. To help out toward a Federalist United States, he proposed the Constitution Convention with James Madison and John Jay in Philadelphia and also persuaded people in New York to vote towards the new government. As we know today, the Federalist Party won and the new United States was created with the Congress and Constitution with it. However, the United States was still unorganized and in debt from the Revolutionary War, which is a huge problem for the country at the time. In 1780, Washington made Hamilton responsible for getting the U.S. out of debt, so he outlined a financial plan for something that will change the United States forever, and it was a plan calling for the first national bank of the United States. The first bank of the United States was created by Hamilton for the new United States in 1791 to enhance the new federal government it was. He based the bank off of the Bank of England. As the Federalist he was, he supported and was fond of England at the time. Placed in Philadelphia, a deal was created to move the capital from mostly Federalist state Pennsylvania to dominantly anti-Federalist Maryland, where it is today in Washington, D.C. This deal was created to get the anti-Federalist on his side, a federal bank for an anti-Federalist capital. So what did the bank do once it was created? What the Federalist wanted it to do. Get the U.S. on a strong financial track. Hamilton wanted to place tariffs and taxes on imported and manufactured goods and create excise tax, which worked, but it was very slow. In 1792, a year after the bank was created, the U.S. had its first financial panic. The bank created a big expansion of financial credit, and people got scared of a crash, and companies and industries, like real estate, shot up their stock prices so they can keep money in their pockets after a possible crash. Hamilton had a solution to this. He and other people in the treasury gave banks huge amounts of money to make loans. The bank can then give people money and bump up the interest rate to take in more money than they gave. After the panic settled, a major problem was still at hand, the currency. The new bank didn't accept state currency which was a problem for a lot of people. When the country was in its colonial times, people used British or French coins, but if you go south enough, people use Spanish dollars. This created many types of currency in regional and state areas and caused a national problem. Hamilton put forth the first Coinage Act in 1792 that enabled the bank to start handing out coins to the public. This helped spread the coins around by making them through the new U.S. Mint. The act started to spread the coins, like pennies, around the U.S. and made Hamilton's plan complete. Hamilton has completed what he did, but it was not easy. The U.S. still had many problems, and Hamilton had some opposing people. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations will grow up around them, will deprive the people of all property until the children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered, Jefferson said against Hamilton's bank plan. Jefferson, as an anti-federalist, hated money men and banks, and was the opposite of Hamilton. Jefferson, however, was not alone. Most other Americans were against it, too, 
and the reason was because of how much power it could get, and if it was constitutional or not. Hamilton felt that the bank was constitutional through the Constitution's Elastic Clause, which states, The Congress shall have power to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers, and all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States, or in any department or officer thereof, meaning that Congress can create the bank with the charter. In 1811, the bank closed down because of the charter. Congress did not choose to keep it up, and so it closed down, but the idea of the central bank stuck around. Through Hamilton's plan, the U.S. was becoming responsible for its financial issues and becoming a stronger and more independent country. Today, we see traces of Hamilton's plan like the U.S. Mint and Federal Reserve Bank, which make up what the United States is. During the time of Hamilton's bank, he saw it as a magnificent stepping stone for the United States at the time, which it was. However, Today, people blame Hamilton for the debt issues we have today, specifically the Federal Reserve Bank, and disagree with Hamilton's achievements. To have so much control of what the financial track of a country would be at one moment is a lot to handle. Good work, Hamilton.